Hi, everyone. I'm Jeff Kelly. I'm joined by Ivan Novik and Mark Dunlap, who are both members of the Green Plum team here at Pivotal. Welcome, Ivan and Mark. Thanks for joining me. Hey, Jeff. So, Ivan, obviously, there's been a lot of advancements in hardware technology over the last several years. And I'm wondering, what are the implications for data warehousing? There are quite a few advancements, and we continue to look at them and pick which components and which updates are going to help data warehousing workloads as, as much as possible. Two of my personal favorites are network and memory. Um, from a network point of view, we were standardized on 10 gig for about the last six, seven years, but now we're seeing both 25 and 40 gig networks becoming commodity, and as well um, systems that have enough um, ports to handle up to eight of these uh, mm -hmm. network, network connections. So you can have up to eight cards or eight uh, networks that are each 25 to 40 gigs. And this really helps with uh, shuffling data around when you have petabyte scale data warehouses and you want to do joins, redistributions, and compare and contrast data, you really need to be able to move the data over the network. And so now the, the, the amount of throughput you can get is dramatically increased as well. By, by using high memory systems, frequently customers can fit their, their whole working data set in, in memory and be essentially doing in memory processing of their data warehousing workloads. And that really helps a lot. And so we're seeing people go to terabyte plus RAM configurations per server now. Great, and, and Mark, what's your perspective? Uh, I, guess, I guess to add on to what Ivan said, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll think, of, I think about it from the CPU perspective and also the disk perspective. Uh, more broadly, again, in, in, when I think of data warehousing, it's, it's all about Greenplum, obviously. And uh, as an MPP database uh, architecture or, or database engine, um, the Greenplum wants and needs nodes that are balanced, balanced from a CPU perspective, balanced from a memory perspective, uh, interconnect and disk IO and, and, and throughput. So when, when you think about each one of those uh, kind of in, in its entirety, obviously there's been huge advancements across the board. But one of the biggest changes has been this notion of Moore's Law moving forward with extreme high core count uh, CPUs. Um, five, 10 years ago, we were talking you know, dual core, maybe two socket systems of four core totals, about maybe 12 to, in, in the case of the Sun Thumper, 48 drives internal to each one of those nodes. Now we're talking about, you know, 24 core procs are, are kind of the, the quote unquote standard and that numbers, you know, will probably double again this year. So that, that, that's been the biggest swing from a CPU perspective. I think that it, then it becomes a matter of how do you keep those cores busy? What do you, how do you, how do you actually drive enough work into those cores to, um, to make them worthwhile? If you think about it, everything's priced on cores as well. That, that the cores tend to be the expense or the CPU is the big expense of the nodes. Um, and then also the uh, software licenses are tied to the cores. So what you want to do is make sure you're optimizing those cores. And that goes back to the balance. Um, so what we need to do with, again, all of this hardware capability is make sure we can drive these high core count CPUs. That means we've got to up our IO throughput and IOPS capabilities from the disk drives. So if we, we would get, say, a traditional two gig per second for a 48 core CPU, that's probably not gonna drive it very hard. So we need to, we need to look at alternative ways to drive those cores uh, through IO, and as, as I had mentioned on the networking side as well. So how do we increase from 10 gig a second to 25 to 40 gig, gig a second? How do we work do more work in, in, in memory as well? So and I think it's all related, but again, we've seen advancements across the board. Um, and then Greenplum is just the, you know, the, the best database on the planet to take advantage of all those resources. Okay, so from a deployment perspective, is it better to go dense and high power and essentially scale up uh, you know, one really powerful machine? Or is it better to go thin and scale out across a cluster of you know, relatively inexpensive machines? And I mean this from a price perspective, uh, sorry, price performance perspective, but also from a manageability perspective. Right, so um, at a high level, we are talking about scale out technology. So we're always gonna be thinking of starting with one system and scaling out. But the analogy 
analogy I like to use is when you fly, it's very expensive to go first class, but you don't want to be economy either. Premium economy is, is where you want to get your value. So you don't want to get the cheapest servers out there and call that commodity. They're going to end up, you're going to end up building this huge garbage pile. You want to get, you want to stay within commodity and, and not special purpose computers, but then get the highest performance systems you can and create those as your building blocks that you're going to scale out. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree with Ivan's, Ivan's take on that. I, and again, it goes back to this balance notion. Um, if, if today's commodity, quote unquote, is a 24 core processor and you, a dual socket, again, you've got 48 cores as commodity. That's your sweet spot from a price perspective. Um, so, you know, in, in that case, that's, it, it's, it's not necessarily first class <laughs> and it's not the economy seats, uh, but it is, it is the sweet spot. And then it becomes, like I said, this notion of how do you, how do you make sure you get the best experience in that premium economy class that, that I am And Mark, when, when we started working on these things, most of the, most of the time someone tried to do more than two CPU sockets per server, they would say that was a special system. What have you seen out there as far as how big any one system could go now? Yeah, so, and, and again, this is another interesting hardware advancement is you'll see like a two socket um, machine today, you'll see four socket machines, actually you're seeing more and more of those. Um, what they, they're, they're not just adding two additional sockets, they're literally doubling everything about that node in one node so the additional pcie channels all of the all of the technical capabilities you know necessary again to drive those those cpus are there so again that is commodity when you think about it it's just it's just how it sits in that enclosure uh, so there's not, nothing there's nothing special about it you just double it the benefit is it's now in two or sorry, three rack units instead of two rack units. So you get double everything uh, in a four socket uh, setup with um, uh, what is it? Uh, another 50% of the rack units. Hey Jeff, one more thing that you'll, you would definitely be interested in is that from the hardware trend, we now have non-volatile non -volatile RAM. Mm -hmm. So you can get a, a disk drive that has the same speed as RAM, as memory, but it can permanently store your data. And we have ways that we can leverage those as well to drive some of the, the workloads that are, let's call it the random I.O. workloads and keep the sequential workloads on kind of the big data drives, but we can do some fast I.O. on the non-volatile RAM as well. That's definitely an interesting development. So what's happening between Pivotal and Dell then in terms of taking advantage of all this technology uh, and making Greenplum you know, really hum? Yeah, so this is, uh, again, a, one of the interesting things about the Dell technology is their line of Power Edge servers. Uh, so this is a line of servers um, that is basically all the same internal components, just in different chassis and different configurations. So uh, the high end is a, what they call a 940. Uh, and uh, that, that is what I described before, this notion of a four socket uh, enclosure. Uh, you can drop down to a 740XD, which is more of the traditional uh, 2U, two-socket enclosure. But the, the interesting thing, again, with this whole, across this whole line is it's the same parts that you're using. It's the same chips you're using. It's the same hard drives you're using. But literally, it's, it's, again, it's, it's the same equipment, if you will, or same components across these. Uh, regardless of how you you kind of configure them or which chassis that you set them up in, so it's a very robust sort of versatile line, and it fits it fits this notion of the Green Plum building blocks very well. From the Green Plum team, and we've had um, solutions based on Dell back to 2008, mm -hmm. and um, even in recent times, the last couple of years, we've been testing out these new configurations. Mark is really talking about, and um, and we've created official um, partnership around this solution. So there's, if you, if you talk to a Dell representative, you can give them the solution ID and you can have a full reference architecture ready to go for, that's a Dell Green Plum Pivotal solution. And also down in the link below on the video, you can see the link to our website. You can read more, more about, the, um, about the solution and, and get 
uh, more details about the, the particularities. Great, and it's called Green Plum Building Blocks, and essentially, as you said, a reference architecture with Dell hardware running Pivotal Green Plum software. Yep. Excellent. Well, guys, thanks so much for taking time today to talk. I appreciate it. This has been a really interesting conversation, and as Ivan said, for you watching, uh, you want to learn a little bit more about Green Plum Building Blocks, check out the link below. Thanks, guys.